Deputy Darnley. Uh, thanks, Chair. Thank you all very much for your um, presentations. Um, I'll just ask the, the, the questions together. My, my first question is on funding. Um, I think EI and the IDA, and indeed in Trade Ireland, I think they do a phenomenal job. Uh, but I was disappointed to see in the budget that only three million was allocated. The figures speak for themselves in terms of the trade risk to um, various sectors in the country. And three percent of the budget, I think, represented one fifth of one percent of the the fiscal space. And whilst I've read through the documents in terms of what's going on, particularly in terms of EI and engaging with indigenous, um, the indigenous sector to diversify and get them ready and so forth, it's clear as day from the data that you've provided to the committee from the reports that the indigenous sector is not prepared and is not thinking about this as well as they should. And on the ground, I'm seeing very little interaction. So my first question is, is three million enough to prepare Ireland for what is probably the biggest macro shock we're going to face, hopefully, for quite some time for our indigenous sector? It, it, it doesn't feel to me like it's enough for you to be doing enough of what you're talking about. So, for example, Mr. Goff talked about uh, breakfast briefings and so forth. Certainly the business sector in Wicklow does not feel it's being proactively engaged with. Now, maybe that's because you're still ramping up and the money's being allocated and you're hiring in the teams. But could you just tell us whether or not, could you usefully put 10 million euro to, to work? Let me, let, let me put it like that. Um, the second question I have is on the Brexit coordination group. Can I just ask, it, it seems to be quite a small group of people or a small group of bodies. Are there any departments other than jobs and enterprise on it? If not, would you welcome some other some others on it. Are there any employer groups on it, like ISME or IBEC or SFA or, or, or anybody else? If not, do you think there should be? Um, and my final question, um, Mr. Goff, is probably mainly to you. It's around informal talks. I know the Irish government has to take a position that all negotiations between the UK will be between the UK and the remaining 27 countries. But I hope that there are very intense and detailed informal talks going on. The most obvious place, obviously, is between the North and the South. But could I ask Mr. Goff for Intertrade Ireland, and, and I guess indeed for EI and the IDA, at what level of informal talks uh, are going on? I mean, are they, and are they getting into, so for example, the, the example you gave on the flour mills is a fantastic example of the devil really being in the detail for this. So there were three questions. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, whoever, um, Ms Buckley, do you want to take that question there? Certainly. Um, uh, from the perspective of the level of informal talks that are taking place, um, we're, uh, the, the nature of our business has always been to, it's very strongly based on, on relationships and, and the depth of the conversations uh, with them, with our client companies. So um, we have always been engaging with our clients on the opportunities and challenges they face globally. Um, so in that regard, we continue with all of those engagements and uh, we have certainly been proactively engaging with our clients, uh, not just our, uh, their operations here in Ireland, but globally, because that's where a lot of the decisions will be made um, on what they're going to do. So that is the first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, in order to to capture potential clients, which is key as well for us. We have been very actively uh, involved in, in the media globally. Uh, in particular, our CEO is very focused on getting the message out about Ireland as a location for FDI. Um, and that has been done uh, both, in, both in print um, and in TV media right across the globe. Uh, in addition, we are partaking, actively partaking in as many conferences, uh, seminars and any type of one-to-many engagement that is possible. But our core uh, uh, function is in that regard, and the way that we do in win business is through our relationships and our engagement with clients. So that has taken place and it will continue to take place uh, right across the globe. 
Um, the question there in relation to the three million, is it enough? Um, somebody uh, take that there, please. My colleague, uh, Mike Murray, might take a, make an initial comment on that comment on it. Just in terms of funding, uh, Deputy, we would have had obviously extensive discussions with our department on what we needed for funding to deal with the immediate issues. And the immediate issues for us are boots on the ground overseas so we can help diversification and so we can drive innovation. And Kevin would have referred to my colleagues from our newly established Brexit unit. So at the moment we feel we are well poised to deal with the situation as it stands now. That is not to say that we won't have to go back to government and have further conversations as we see what Brexit's going to be like, be it hard or soft or whatever, whatever terminology we're using. In terms in terms of ramping up and um, engaging with companies and the unknown, um, a lot of companies are only themselves reflecting now on what their challenges are. And what we've been trying to do is meet with them, contact them and point out what are the services we already have available and now what we will have available to them uh, going forward following the budget and what we've been doing over recent months. So we're comfortable at the moment. I think maybe just to add to that, uh, Deputy, just in terms of, of companies' preparedness uh, for, for Brexit, it is true to, true to say it's not uniform, uh, and companies are responding to the situation as it's evolving. Maybe just give you one example of, of that is, if you take an area like, for instance, I mentioned agricultural machinery, uh, the immediate response in, in to the market in terms of agricultural machinery was actually uh, farmers that would be buying agricultural machinery in the UK and Northern Ireland was to stop purchasing because they, they were wondering what is the situation going to be in relation to single farm payment and in terms of, of their, their spend. So rather than it be a currency issue or a pricing issue, actually um, their response was uh, in the short term to stop purchasing which created a greater shock than actually any exchange rate fluctuation. Actually, what has happened now is, is that many of those companies that are um, also in competition with, with companies, Irish companies that are in competition with, with suppliers from outside of Ireland have sought price increases and have actually got them, and the market has started to move again. Now, that situation could change again. So they're, they're responding and evolving to the situation as it emerges. Equally, um, customers in the UK market, Irish companies would be the majority of Irish companies supplying into that market. It's business to business as opposed to business to consumer, with the exception of, of, of the food sector. And companies in that area are tied into, by and large, into um, medium to long term contracts. So if you're supplying into something like the aerospace industry, there's all the approval process to be, to, to be gone through. There's, um, so switching suppliers from the customer's point of view is not necessarily easy to do. And that would be a good example, for instance, of, of, of north-south trade, where Irish, some Irish companies would be supplying into Bombardier, never mind into, into the UK. So every sector is, is different, and we're having to deal with them on a company-by-company -company basis and a sector-by-sector and -sector basis. And as I mentioned er, earlier, and as we referred to uh, with, by my colleague in Intertrade Ireland, the companies that are, um, that are hedged, by and large, uh, those, that hedging was in place until the end of the year with few ex exceptions. So they're having to look at, well, what's their pricing strategy for next contracts coming up and hedging. So it is something that, that we're staying on top of and really does require us to deal one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with the companies. But one thing that, that we can say is, is we do have a um, strong relationship with those companies and would be aware of what their position is and, and understand positions are and understand where their exposures are and then it's based then based on responding to them one on one and having a plan in place with each of those companies. Thank you Mr Sherry. I think there might have been a third question in relation to the Brexit group, the makeup of the Brexit group. Am I correct, Deputy Donnelly? Uh, yeah. yeah, plus the, the, the question on talks, and thank you for the answer, um, Ms. Buckley, on the, the question on the talks was more, uh, uh, less around the IDA and its clients. The question, Chair, was more around, are officials talking? So are there officials from Dublin, London and Belfast beginning to sit down and identify exactly the sort of micro opportunities and threats that Mr. Goff was talking about? Wouldn't you like to take that, please? Yeah. Well, one, of the, one of the things I can say that is, is the answer to that is, is, is that officials are talking. 
um, and there was recent meetings, for instance, of, of Secretary Generals um, of government departments here in Ireland with Secretary Generals in, in the UK over in, in Whitehall, and that exchange of in information is, is, is taking place. And obviously, um, there's concerns on both sides about how this develops and, and emerges. Um, from, from our perspective, we've highlighted to, to our colleagues in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade who have been involved, and our own department, Department of Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation, the issues that we're seeing on the ground and ensuring that, that they're raised. And then in terms of the representative question, um, the group referred to is the, the department and its agencies. That's not to say there isn't extensive dialogue with representative bodies. As Enterprise Ireland, we went out to all the representative bodies through July after the vote. Our department would have done the same and engaged with them. Uh, the Export Trade Council was meeting today, which has private sector representation on it. And the Department of Antishuk also run a consultative group, which involves all the main representative bodies, which would have met last week. Um, so the, I think one thing we can be very sure of is there is extensive conversation within the policy and kind of the policy ecosystem, and uh, there certainly hasn't been a failure in that regard. Thanks, thanks, Thank you, um, Deputy Collins.